Hello, everybody. Um, I'm David D. Hilster. Um, I'm going to be reading this uh, part of a paper that is in our proceedings. Those of you who are long distance or are watching or watching this as a recording, these are available in our proceedings, so you can order them online either at lulu.com or uh, amazon.com. But um, this is from Peter Marquar, who is from, he was one of the, not original members, but of the group of original members of this group. And uh, <coughs> he, uh, we were hoping he would be here because we're back here at the University of Connecticut, where uh, probably this is, there were more meetings of this group at this university than any, pl any place else. And uh, being back here is sort of nostalgic for many of us who have been involved for uh, numbers of decades in this, this uh, organization. And I'm really pleased to read uh, this paper, part of this paper, not all of it by any means, uh, by Peter Marquar. He is a German and he's a philosopher. And he's quite entertaining at speaking, much more than I am. Uh, and uh, he writes in a very uh, interesting way, but uh, really pounds on uh, the philosophy of science and where things go wrong. And um, I'll, I'll be reading a portion of this. I may skip a little bit around, but uh, we're just going to let it sort of go in a, a sort of relaxed way. So uh, well, let's proceed. Uh, the title is A Distant View of Physics 2.0 by Peter Marquardt. Dedicated to all members of our dissident's fam dissident family who passed away. And again, uh, the generation that started this organization um, are, are, were quite old when I met them, so we are sort of uh, losing a lot of people. And he, he's dedicating to many of those people, uh, some of us here uh, in this room knew some really great minds, and uh, we'll read forward. Covering a huge range of topics, physics is influenced in various ways, not always helpful to, to it as a natural science in its own right. Uh, particularly, the misuse of mathematics facilitated to establish dogmas, making physics the battleground of what may be called the language of power, LOP. LOP is the manifold voice of mainstream physics over physics against justified criticism. The present, the present essay exemplifies some of the ways of manipulation, formulas, fancy names, ill-defined concepts, authority, fame, propaganda, uh, Ganunkan experiments, lack, lacking precision, correct results, the Eureka effect, or the hasty acceptance of established knowledge. Exploring the traces of LOP, including those, visit, those beyond physics, is good for some surprises, a valuable lesson for, for our everyday lives, too. I do want to point out that this list that, he, that I just read are pretty much the sections in this paper, and I will not cover all of them because it is too long to read. But again, out of respect for us being here, the reason we are here, I thought this would be uh, nice to make at least one talk and read part of uh, Peter's paper, and I recommend everybody read the whole thing. It's, it's a great read and a great lesson. Languages of power. These strange languages are more familiar to us than meets the eye. Lawyers earn their money with the language of power. It is, it is their way of lending their voice to the clients who would be defenseless facing the jungle of jur uh, uh, juridical rules. Here, the aim of LOP obviously is manipulation. The rules set up by the uh, judiciary leave enough room for interpretation alterations. Giving these rules the status of law is the trademark of their language of power. We should leave that we should leave that to we should leave that to the humanities. The scientist has or should have a distinctly different view of a law as a principle. No exception and no violation allowed. How many laws can we formulate in physics with our state of the art? Most of them in physics, usually expressed in terms of mathematics, suffers from lots of exceptions. Yet they are treated like untouchable verities. This brings us to the problematic LOP and natural sciences, physics in particular. 
Usually, physics is considered an exact science found on its own strategic logic that would not yield to interpretation or amendments or adjustments. Math, above all, is the ma master art of abstraction. Math knows no authority besides its own logic. But it seems physics often yields to the logic of math. Math and physics are not as close together as is generally believed. The scope of physics, unlike that of math, reaches far beyond abstractions. Yet physics cannot do without abstractions, either making it vulnerable to math. The vulnerability of physics to math raises some suspicion that some tricky language of power may be active. Upon closer inspection of many problems, we realize that a, a language of power invades the official treatment of physics much deeper than we or they would like to admit. In fact, LOP comes in many disguises. Fortunately, we can stay simple in visualizing them. The present essay exemplifies some easy to recognize effects of language of power in physics, intending to be an appetizer for, some, for, for the search of more. The various activities of the language of power in physics are in, interwoven into a in a tricky way. Math is a good start to enter the subject. Mighty math. Formulas for formulas. Math and physics are two distinctly different worlds. Great scientists in their own right. Great, I'm sorry, great sciences in their own right. Yet the mathematical language of power rules in physics, surprisingly often to the disadvantage of physics. If not used as, faith, uh, as faithful servant, math can dis be, be destructive, leaving physics rather helpless. Correct results lead astray if taken as proof of a theory. A formula has to be backed up by an analysis in terms of solid physical principles. Unfortunately, prominent theories owe their fame to purely mathematical procedures. That we should note, a correct result is not sufficient to prove a physical theory right. That should be carved into stone. It is a good challenge to both mainstreamers and we upstream swimmers, aka dissonance. Mainstreamers tend to avoid the challenge if they notice it at all. At least our side should keep an eye on why does it work, mathematically that is, why it shouldn't, violating physical principles. Math, if misused, opens the door to all the nasty contradictions and inconsistencies that survive and lead a merry life in numerous textbooks and university lectures. Some formulas become so famous they don't require any explanations as to the meaning of their symbols. Names suffice as their labels, Planck, black body radiation, Newton, gravitation, Boltzmann, entropy, Maxwell, electromagnetic waves. One of them, mass energy equivalents, deserves special attention. It, in particular, owns its fame to propaganda, although, or because, it is as simple as can be a, can be a formula. Its simplicity contrasts physics, uh, the physics it claims to represent. Books have written about these few symbols, E equals MC squared. They become the trademark of modern physics, a graffiti for genius, and erroneously, the flag for relativity. Excited by Einstein's fame, the public jumped to a status of, jumped to a status of experts on energy and the free trade between matter and energy became the big hope to solve all energy problems. The free conversion of mass to energy is not what the formula says. It says energy is proportional to mass and to C squared. Dimensions tell us that mass and energy are different. Energy is, is context dependent and can only be defined in connection with a complex interacting system. That puts C squared in the category of context, context parameters. Classical mechanics tells us that velocity squared terms are dynamic potentials as known from the good old V squared over two. Static, static and dynamic potentials are the, are the veritable currency of dynamics because they represent two sides of the same metal. Uh, check dimensions, e.g., with Newton's gravity potential.
Care should be taken not to confuse dynamics with kinematics and not to carelessly import energy into the ambiguous world of relative velocities where c squared has no place. A lonesome, non-interacting, free particle just, just does not have a velocity or a velocity squared potential all by itself, and it would be foolish to speak of self-energy just by attaching the c squared factor to its mass. The potentials associated with the boundless particles that those in the atomic nucleus do not show up in mc, mc squared. The energy liberated by fusion or fission was stored in the original configuration of the system. If this is not explicitly respected, how can we be sure that the mass defect is not calculated by E over C squared in a vicious cycle to prove, to prove equals MC squared. If left to math, that notorious C squared remains a stranger unless backed up by at least the attempt to give it some physical significance. One promising aspect might be to view the mysterious C squared as an uh, ubiquitous background potential which makes equals MC squared look more innocent than sen uh, sensational. Paul Wesley extended Weber's theory to, to cosmology and arrived at the gravitational potential C squared of all distant masses in an infinite universe with a constant density and enlar enlarged cosmological principle, thus giving C squared physical meaning. Potentials are, are a successful and con consistent way to take interactions into account. It is a bad habit to neglect constant potentials and make them an arbitrary dimension less zero. In the paradigm, only, con uh, uh, only conservative forces have a potential is a premature mathematical statement and should be stated more precisely. Conservative forces have an analytical potential. Usually potentials are taken as static, adding V squared to the family, allowing for any change of V, take a jerk for it, for instance, the result need not be analytical. Analytical is good for textbook problems, but fails to give a general, public, general picture. Friction works on the same principle as all forces do, whether we can formulate the underlying potentials or not. For, histor for historically has a long force has <laughs> force historically has a longer career but more conspicuous than energy, a late comer in physics. Energy is conserved, force is not. In retrospective, the lever, one of mankind's earliest machines, was nature's distinct hint at energy conservation. Yet still getting at con contention as feet, uh, yet still getting attention as fields, forces as gradients or static and dynamic potentials are erroneously considered more fundamental than their integrals. Potentials are fields too. They are definitely higher in hierarchy than their derivatives. They play a fundamental role in dynamics, establishing that all important context and interacting system, systems. Get acquainted with the idea of C squared as a potential, uh, uh, as a potential offers a swell opportunity to abandon special relativity, neomechanics being a better name for high velocity dynamics. The C squared potential is constant. For dynamics, we, must, we may introduce the term gamma factor. Math does not care whether we arrive at the gamma factor, gamma, and of course we know the equation, by means of kinematics, special relativity and transformations, or dynamics, neomechanics and energy. The neomechanical procedure in a nutshell introduced dynamic factor gamma for energy equals gamma, uh, of V times MC squared, and momentum P equals gamma V MV. Use the theorem kinetic energy, there's that, I won't read them, cancel to get the C squared gamma, separate the variables and integrate, and take the correct boundary conditions, gamma equals one. Voila, in both terms, gamma looks identical. Their meanings are fundamentally different, V being unique, of absolute value in neomechanics, the, pro the proper stage where C squared belongs to make gamma C squared, a dynamic potential due to a moving mass interacting with its surroundings. The context is decisive. A flat pebble tossed at, at a water surface may sink or bounce off according to dynamic conditions. The pebble does not change. The reaction of the water does. 
Relativity does not offer a mechanism for an upper ultimate speed. Blind math, not respecting physical principles, help question the theories. Serve, uh, a blind, ma blind math, not respecting physical principles, help questionable theories survive in spite of their f fatal flaws. Planck arrived at his formula in search for the best mathematical fit between two limiting cases. The physical analysis of thermal radiation started with entropy, a thermodynamic concept that constantly certainly does not apply to a single particle. Nothing compels us to interpret radiation in terms of single photons. Planck scaled down some constants, dividing the gas constant by Avogadro's number. He arrived at the, what became known as the Boltzmann's constant, K, on, mole on the molecular level. Does this make it a never discussed quantum of entropy? Planck's scaling gives a misleading impression of radiation, reducing it to a single particle event. The application of math decides whether it's, it is friend or foe of physics. To repeat, a correct result is not sufficient to tell us whether math is a friend, is the friend. There must be better proof. There, this is where engineers come in. They excel as noble examples in precision. Fanfare for engineers. Theoreticians, mathematical, mathematical physicists, tend to overdo their mathematical treatment when they lose track of physics beyond a formula. A bad case of language over power is putting elementary constants C equals E equals H equals 1, wiping all, out all traces of all important physical dimensions and emphasizing a probability factor instead. Probability above all is, is the, we admit, often helpful mathematical expression for a lack of detailed knowledge, but not a physical principle. For physics, the inspection of dimensions is utterly helpful to tell whether a formula is definitely wrong or whether it may be right. Engineers know very well why, the res why they respect correct dimensions and flawless calculations. Their technical products must prove to work. This brings their work closer to an experimental situation than an abstract theory does. Gedanken experiments, they are a mighty tool of the language of power. Gedanken experiment is an oxymoron because it replaces experience by assumptions and conjectures. It is the realm of pseudo answers by the means of virtual reality. Yet Gedanken experiments may be very instructive if they stick to the rules of physics. This goes for experiments that comply with real physical principle, but cannot pr be performed for practical reasons. Take an object moving along a hypothetical tunnel through the Earth's center under the influence of gravitation. Yet we can calculate the oscillation passage through the tunnel. But the misuse of conducting experiments eventually gives a careless, carelessly skeletonized scenario that the status uh, uh, scenario, the status of physical principle. There are serious doubts about Einstein's writing on a light beam, or Heisenberg's single photon microscope, or Schrodinger's poor cat, and the fruitless conjectures thereof. Simultaneous measurement of a position and momentum? In the case of a free particle, i.e. in a region of constant potential, its position and momentum have no physical meaning. They are assumed to please motivated, they are assumed to please motivated reasoning, which in this case is the non-commutativity uh, commuti of momentum and, pos and position operators. Language of power of math at work and to justify uncertainty. Where does the particle have its velocity and position from? Why do we have to measure both simultaneously? Boy, that's a good question. Trivial, trivially, linear momentum changes the position of the particle. But this is, this is no justification to establish an intrinsic uncertainty. Action is a dynamic principle which puts the parameter products, delta E, delta tau, and delta P, delta R, and on an equal footing. Here, the, operate, the operator language gets in trouble. What is 
a time operator supposed to do? The definition of uh, the definition action delta e delta tau. I won't read the uh, the equations. Uh, yields the above straightforward derivation. A neo-mechanical relativistic factor of gamma, again, the gamma of the relativistic gamma we know, and V referring to the unique system characterized by C squared potential, no transformations involved. The existence of a unique light uh, uh, limiting speed C now is a collective effect of a large dynamic system we rightly call the universe. A single mass need, uh, need not diverge upon approaching C. More likely, it, its dynamic surroundings change, associating, associating gamma with C squared rather than with M. Mathematically, not, uh, nothing changes. A similar argument applies to tunneling. A confining potential is likely to change under the repeated attack of a particle and its penetrating need to be exclusively quantum mechanical. If the potential does not recover before the next attacks, it will eventually yield, and finally, the particle escapes, oops, escapes no energy on loan needed to save the conservation principle in the balance. We live in a world of continuously changing dynamic potentials, fracture, turbulence, melting, evaporation, collision, emission, absorption, you name it. Multiple cooperation is the stage for quantized action. Experiments with, necess uh, with necessity imply interacting principal particle systems. For a Gunduncan experiment, these seem to be no, there seems to be no limit as to the simplification of a chosen scenario. This often leads to fruitless discussions. Fancy names. There is a random selection of fancy names that come as trademarks in support of theories they claim to represent in a nutshell. Time dilation, inertial systems, space curvature, Lorentz contraction, superposition, probability waves, self-interference, self collapse of wave packets, uh, watchdog effect, god particle, entanglement, vacuum fluctuations, teleportation, Self-energy, uncertainty, dualism, uh, dualism complementarity, virtual particles, and of course the notorious Big Bang. An originally a, a, ironic remark by Frank Hoyle who coined it. Some of them are contradictory, some ill-defined, and some are quite funny. Fancy, the names, uh, fancy names may originate from a eureka experience, but this does not entitle them to block further inspection. What new insight did Einstein's curvature of space give us that goes beyond Newton's time-honored gravity to potential? Good question. It is self-contradictory to postulate empty space, a void or whatever, and yet equip, equip it with some physical quality if needed. Very well put. Danger, dogma ahead. In spite of its, its many errors, we do and should not imply that the language of power always comes up with wrong answers. The answers may be very right, but not necessarily the method that led to them. This makes its identification sometimes difficult. The success of, the success of some prominent theories is owed to benevolent, benevolent math. Benevolent for the, fa for the faulty model, not for physics. The language of power often defends a correct result but becomes fatal if it supports contradictions and it becomes dangerous when it turns into dogma. <coughs> Definite dogmas are, are as unscientific as can be. The fatal language of power is a flop. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> In the scientist's struggle for fame and honor, the language of power forms a mighty club. In it, two different meanings. Apologies for the puns, a dogma, and science calls for fighting as calls for fighting also with a weapon of irony. Philosophy. From psychology, it's often a step to philosophy. If understanding fails, truth seekers wander off to where they hope to find greener pastures. 
philosophy comes up with problems that, are, that easily outstress the scope of physics. How did the universe come into being? Or did time have a beginning? Touch regimes outside of physics. Philosophy cannot decide between Big Bang and a steady state universe, infinite in extension and duration. We are clueless without evidence from physics. Big, the Big Banger's pet model of an expanding balloon surface and the ubiqu ubiquitous Doppler redshift meet to, many, meet to many serious problems to serve as evidence. The search for infinite velocity should be settled since uh, Romer's time. How fast does gravity prop propagate? Has to be specified to make sense in physics. If anything propagates at all, it changes gravity waves at the unique absolute upper limit C. Infinite velocity is a hard is a hard shelled problem even for philosophy because it implies being everywhere at the same time, i.e., ubiquitous existence. The origin of what we call gravity fields takes C squared potential as a symbol, and of and of their sources is beyond our reach. Space time or space curvature and other magic, although mathematically sweet, ident ideas give rise to many philosophical sounding question, uh, to many a philosophically sounding question. A multiple universe, or say 14 dimensions, may look more impressive than what we already have to cope with, uh, to cope with before. What good are such excursions into sci-fi? We can't handle that one. We cannot. We can't handle that one and only universe, let alone more than one. Philosophy does not have to give definite answers and offers all kinds of guesses. No wonder quantum mysteries like uncertainty or wave particle dual, dual, dualism cause prominent physicists to venture into philosophy. Philosophy may provide some good or even intriguing stimuli, but they should not be expected to yield definite answers. Physics deals with facts and faces the difficulty to unravel chains of causes. The de detailed booking of all conditions involved, why questions, is hard, if at all, to achieve. The why is the child's natural question. If the adults make the effort to get an answer, it's good for a friendly smile. The well-known metaphor of the problematic infinite regress that questions the first cause arguments has old roots. We find the metaphor in, in Halton R. Seeing Red, satirical title, in the late Stephen Hawking's A Short, time of his, a short History of Time, f philosophical t uh, title, and in Bert, Bert, uh, Bertrand Russell's 1927 talk, Why Am I Not a Christian? Provocative title. Arp has an elderly lady comment on a scientific talk. What you tell is all wrong. What you tell us is all wrong. The world is flat and rests on a giant turtle. Ask what the turtle rests upon, she replies. Oh, it's turtles all the way down. Turtles, elephants, or rocks, or whatever, the metaphor is characteristic of our situation that has not changed since it's first come up, maybe with the Hindus. The problem may be identical, identified with that of the missing sufficient condition. Mathematically speaking, we may be able to name arbitrary, many necessary conditions for anything that happens or that we, might, we observe. Just think of the conditions that we have fulfilled while you are reading this article here and now. You'll find many conditions that are necessary, but not a single one that suffices to lead to this, to this special event. You may be familiar with Gauss Faust, Faust uh, the poor guy who regrets to have studied so much to no avail and who sells his soul for his childish wish to know the reason of all reasons or for the first cause. Was die Welt in ihm in Stein und Haut. That's the later on. We recognize Faust's unsolved and unsolved problem in its modern versions of, say, unified theories or world formulas. Here's where physics yields to an intruder disguises philosophy. Here, Eureka meets, meets speculation. 
possibly be good enough for a child's joy, but a definite answer. We cannot blame a child for his or her joy, but we have adults that have to be modest and honest against ourselves. The toolbox of physics is not that of math, of math or philosophy. It is large enough all by itself to provide possibilities galore for unpredictable future research. Philosophy must not get the best of the scientists if we wish to avoid the ta tail wags the dog effect. Pet ideas can be tricky. Philosophy is hard to be proven wrong, and it is not to be consistent, let alone to provide evidence. Philosophy is hard, okay, I said that. <laughs> it is a less trouble, it is, it is a less troublesome discipline than solid science. But it risks to, but it's risk to forward answers which are too easily taken to be definite. The claim, say, to know now why there is mass is no better than turtles all the way down. It should surprise us that not only some of the famous Copenhageners were attracted to philosophy. It's wise to distinguish philosophy, like math, safely from science, physics. Otherwise, it may turn into one more language of power. Okay, I'll read a little bit more. Uh, we'll just basically go until it's about oh, 40 minutes, more, 10 more minutes. Language of power beyond physics, a must. Well, let me see here. Okay, yeah, well, we're almost done. Great. So we're good. Language of power beyond physics, a most rewarding a lesson. First time I read titles across three pages. The aim of our little excursion through this regime of various languages of power is to sharpen our view to its manifold disguises, not just in science. The language of power claims it, it to advertise that only correct, only correct, the only correct way, but fails to encourage objective criticism. Even correct results are worthy of criticism. The language of power is also the language of importance, pride, and exaggeration. Its dogmatic use is always anti-scientific. Science must not be a battlefield of emotions. An exhaustive treatment of the language of power in physics, let alone in our everyday lives, is impossible. Language of power is a wide field for all kinds of make-believe. It's not just virtual reality alone. How can, la can languages of power be counteracted? Open the ivory towers and throw away the keys. It may earn us some applause from the taxpaying public, not necessarily, of course, from the tower guardians. The study of various languages of power is, rewarding, is a rewarding lesson beyond physics too. Our everyday lives are constantly influenced by manipulations from outside or inside. Yes, a language of power can be sneaky because it, often, it is often so trivial and therefore easily overlooked. Next time you go to a supermarket, watch for the signs of language, language of power there. You will det detect a surprising variety of languages of power that lures around many corners. Or take politics. We don't have to mention any names here, do we? We may learn a lot about the human nature, including ourselves, about human nature, including ourselves. We have to accept languages of power where they seem to be unavoidable. Just think of the, the their most gul, um, gul, gul, I don't, guleft them left value. Oh, no, those are latex terms. Uh, we'll just go by that. Um, money, kind, etc. Uh, look in your book there for that. Sorry about that. I'll go back to that. <clears throat> we have to accept languages of power where they seem to be unavoidable. But we can do something about languages of power where they certainly do not belong and where they do not, where they can be avoided. <clears throat> where they are least expected in, si in signs, we need whistleblowers. I'll read that again. Where they are least expected in science, we need whistleblowers. Their objective is not to attack people. Attacks 
are a deplorable emotional aspect of languages of power where they have run out of scientific arguments. Instead, the whistleblowers must commonly point their fingers at objectionable, con objectionable concepts and at the fatal consequences thereof. In respect of one, the in respect of the one and only authority, nature. Again, this is Peter Marquardt. I'm reading his paper, and he gives thanks. I'm indebted to uh, Isia Kalfi for bringing the lawyer's view of the language power to my attention. To Hans Zweig for many enjoyable discussions. Uh, thank you very much, Peter, for those words. Okay, um, I hope uh, maybe you've had your proceedings open to look at this, but uh, maybe uh, any discussion about uh, this idea of language of power and, and uh, the philosophy. I think one of the nice things of a paper like that, after days and days of technical papers and te technical uh, presentations, it gets us back to you know the question of why are we doing this, how are we doing this, uh, what are the words we use, what, what are the emotions involved? What are the dogmas that we face? And uh, it's, it, philosophy is needed, this idea of naturalphilosophy.org. I, when we were getting that um, domain name, I remember, uh, I think Duncan was involved with it, my father was involved with it. Um, one thing I can say, and I've said this before, and I say this on the website uh, in our about section, I think this group is, the best group on the planet to take care of such a domain name, such a, a, a word. And I think uh, uh, us having philosophical discussions and, and people like Peter Marquardt's uh, observations, really worth, I, I, again, I encourage people to get the proceedings, uh, read uh, Peter's article in full, because it's got a lot more than I had put there. That was for up to 37 minutes, so. Any comments uh, from anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Bill Lucas. Uh, those of us who have uh, lost our jobs uh, because we violated the language of power know all about it. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the amazing stories you hear over and over. It's, it goes against, I think one of the things that, if you ask the average person on the street, you tell them this, their immediate reactions, they don't believe it. They don't believe these things happen. Um, you, know, uh, you hear story after story. My mentor, Dr. Karazani, has an experiment that shows special relativity wrong. He had two students, I think from one from Caltech and another from another prestigious university, master's degrees, take his experiment in hand and go to their professors at these prestigious uh, institutions and say, hey, uh, I found my master's thesis, this is what I want to do. What should the reaction be? Oh, this is a criticism of, of, of today's theories. That's a great idea. Maybe you will find something and push science forward. Both students had the same uh, reaction from their professors. They say, sit down. They said, sit down at the desk. They went to the door, closed the door, and sat down and said the same thing in both in both cases. Do you want a career in physics? Do you want what? Do you want a career in physics? And it says, of course. He says, then don't do this experiment. What kind of university system do we have that, what, what, you know, we're in the what, 21st century? This sounds, this sounds like, you know, a, a totalitarian government. You can't, you can't do that? If this was a software engineer and a guy comes in and says, I've got a new computer language, I've got a new app, I've got some new technology that's gonna blow away taxis, you're not gonna need those anymore. What do they do, sit down and say, oh, don't you? We don't write those kind of apps. Why is it that in physics we have these special rules? And there's story after story after story. And that's one of the reasons we're talking today about um, uh, the marketing. But we started a university online. Yeah, we don't have, we have one course and how to teach courses on it. But if we can't do it, if we don't have, we can't go to universities. People on my YouTube channel say, well, 
you're not a physicist. I said, I'd love to go get my doctor in physics, but what I get it in and what I would want to do, they won't allow me. And people lost, have lost their jobs. Bill was being trained as one of the top physicists, and he is one of the top physics minds in the world. But I will say to you, Bill, I'm not sure. I think you, it was destiny because I don't, you couldn't have done all the things you did within the university system. It's sad. Yeah, but unfortunately, that seems to be the case. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons we're starting this university, right? Because we need, we can change that. Universities are that way in a lot of fields. I've talked to a lot of people in a lot of fields, and they have the same reaction. Oh, that's the same in psychology. Oh, yeah, if you go against the psychology, the way they teach it there, you're not going to get in. So, yeah, another question. Go ahead. Uh, I support when you say that uh, you are going to change it. However, I have to discourage you. It's not an easy job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the reason is that physics uh, not only has its own politics, but it is also governed, controlled by politics outside of physics. And, um, some of the theory can be detected wrong, right at an instant it is uh, declared. However, it can continue. Why? Because some politics need, and they need the kind of wrong theory. For example, the Big Bang, you can de uh, determine it's wrong right at the beginning it's declared. Because the uh, uh, Big Bang, once it's bang, completed, and all the matter fly away, and the original location, the bank happened, it must be a big void there. And the void will be getting bigger and bigger, up to 13 and five, uh, 13.5 billion years. That void must be huge, we can see anywhere, okay? But we don't see anything like that. But of course, you can see, uh, you, you can, you can uh, uh, say that, or uh, well, there's some particular source continue to fill the war. That's why we see material all over. But where is that material source? Nobody can say it. Uh, yeah. Besides, if the, such a material source exists, Big Bang has not completed. The Bang is continued even today. So Big Bang refill, uh, refilled it itself right there. Mm -hmm. However, the Big Bang theory can be continued for so many decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so why Big Bang can be, be continued? Not only because there's some political need for the need of remove God. Or for, uh, and I'm not going to uh, uh, argue about whether God exists or not. However, God exists that acceptance of the God exists widely some political uh, interest. That's why they, uh, they, um, they uh, have to keep that theory. But on the other hand, uh, because of the, uh, the, the need of supporting Big Bang, they need relativity to survive. Relativity, both uh, uh, special and general, I believe we have had a lot of uh, 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 theory, uh, refutation, or disproof uh, about the uh, mistake of the uh, relativity by many, many people. I believe it is since 1930, people already begin to, uh, to, to suspect uh, uh, special relativity. However, it continues to the, 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 the today's day. Uh, when I um, travel in Texas, I can see advertising everywhere. Uh, uh, Einstein is the smartest person in the world. They need that image. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up because we're coming up. But uh, yeah, the Big Bang. Uh, one of the things you did mention that I addressed in my documentary, Einstein wrong. Is why you know if you think about it, there are so many problems, and and where's the money coming from, and why? I mean, there the money comes from when the atomic bomb dropped. When the atomic bomb dropped, all of a sudden physicists became superstars. They became very important. 
a world power. Think of it today. What's the most, what do we go to war for? What do we worry more about? Who has the atomic bomb? So if you're a politician, unfortunately, they're not the most, the brightest people. Why do they put billions of dollars into this? Because they want to find the next thing. They don't check to see if these people are doing anything right. They don't check that all the signaling and having 900 people uh, make a paper and pretend to find something and then give themselves prizes. And nothing happens. And then, and then the, the reporters go up in like 60 minutes, went up to the Large Hadron Collider and says, what comes out of this? What, what does mankind get from it? You know what his answer was? The internet. Look at the disconnect there. So yeah, there is still a lot of interest to keep certain things going. But can we change? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna uh, end by reading this email that I got that I've told many of you about. Uh, I'm not putting it uh, on the screen at all, so I'm just gonna read this to you. Here's an email I got on February 14th, 2018. Hi David, I've been checking out your videos and I like them a lot and agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I was wondering, how would someone with zero science background become is this the right one? Um, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I, I thought this was a different one. Hold on. I think I'll read that offline. I don't want to keep people waiting here, but uh, it was an email that I got from Tibetan students. So I'm going to wrap that up here, and I want to thank uh, Peter Marquar for his uh, great article, and I uh, appreciate everybody online. I will. Uh, take a look for this uh, email and uh, just quickly, but we'll wrap up this uh, recording right now. Thank you very much, and thank you, Peter Markbard, for your great paper.